good kitten internet. So I wanted to do a let's analyze to cover a few things that I neglected to finish in Wild Arms. And I've done so. The problem being that um, I didn't record any audio the entire time. Good job, me. So there's... Um, Candace had noticed that there appears to be one fast draw that's missing from my list. And it turns out, yes, I did in fact forget a fast draw. I forgot two. So, what I'm going to do... Alright, oh, it's not here. It's... I have to go this way, which may end up being involving some combat. Um, I'll just fast forward a little bit. Ah, that's not the active window. That is. There we go. So this is just the save, right? The last save that I made in the game. Um, not a big deal or anything. Just a normal save. How are you doing? It's been a while since I've recorded a video on my own. Uh, and if you're wondering why the camera position is different, it's because this is actually the position that my partner's been using for their Let's Play Skyrimfall, which I highly recommend watching, because you'll see my cats. And let's be honest, it's the only reason why anybody watches anything I do. So, uh, let me... Which color was this? Green, okay. Wings. Yeah, you've seen this before, so I'm just fast-forwarding. You notice I don't even have headphones on. Uh, mostly because my head's really hot right now. So. Zoom through. Come on. Nothing is going to hurt me at this point of the game. Sun's being a little crazy right now. Hello, Doomsday. That was one of the enemies that I had never seen before. It wasn't even any beast theory that I was looking at. Mm, this might actually be faster if I just fight myself now I think about it. So we're really here to talk about fast draws. Lots and lots of fast draws. Or whatever. It's gonna be dead anyway. Oh, it's not actually gonna be dead. God, those things have a lot of hit points, don't they? They actually hurt me. I was so rudely interrupted by a boss. Uh, or technically a random monster that's just very similar to a boss. Uh, really? Come oh, kitty, I'm right over here. I want to talk about. See, the problem is that I don't have scripts for these types of things, and because of the way the recording failed to function, I don't have scripts for these types of things. Or at least I mentioned. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have to fight the stupid golem. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna pause this, and I'll you know, actually this golem battles really quick. I do for a YouTube video. Oh no, you healed me. Ah. What I should have done was load up the save from before all of this so I can just easily run away, but oh well. There we go. Ah, you dead yet? 
Thank you. Is Lady doing her boogie? I still don't know how to trigger that. Okay. There should be an exit all the way over here. Yep. This will bring me back to Cottingale. And everybody's flying down. Whee! Hmm, let's see. So, yep. I had missed two separate fast draws, not just one. I don't know why I'm walking. Walking is for people without teleportation. And one of them, I had never even heard of before. The other one I'm pretty sure I've had before, but I'm not entirely sure. So the first one that I missed is right here, actually. It's going to take us a little bit to get through the dungeon, but since we're going fast forward, it's not that big of a deal. So where it's at, I suppose I can just go through there. Let's see if I can make this work. Of course I end up attacking the ones that I didn't want to. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't care. So. Oh, they've already... <sighs> okay. Fine. And now they're just going to die. So rudely interrupted. Oh, I can't jump over there. Okay. Yeah, I think I could, but I want to double check. So it's way at the end of this dungeon, for reference. One of them. You'll see why I'm doing this momentarily. Maybe I can ever actually hit with a freaking status effect. Yeah, you're not going to be able to disease me. Almost as I'm immune to disease and everything else on the planet. Okay, and it's already unparalyzed. Dang it! It's easier to do on lower or on higher level enemies. You know, ones that live long enough. Okay. On the right path. Oh, not there. Wikipedia's going to paralyze. Dangerous object 666. Ow! It just dropped me to 1% of my hit points. That's not very nice. Anyway, all the way through here, so many random encounters. I don't suppose you are immune to Shadowbind? And I promise, there's a reason why I'm trying to paralyze him. Okay. And you're already unparalyzed. Screw it. I'll just show it off with a different type of enemy later. So, going all the way through here to get the fast draw that I missed, that I knew about. I just missed it. Just die, please. Thank you, now go away. Alright. It's actually located behind the chair. Since that cold 
Stormy Knight. You! This is the back of your Black Fenril, the sword of the Chief Knight. Your sword. Can you give this to me? Knight like me? I have to accept this responsibility in the name of my sword. I, I don't think you have to, Jack. So it gives him Black Feral instead of Fenril. Nice typo, even though they already actually spelled it correctly earlier. But also, the secret within the sword of the Chief Fenril Knight is transferred. I gain a fast draw hint. I got it, you old wolf. Uh, I'm actually going to teleport back to Kadingel. Actually, I'm going to teleport over to some place to rest, and then go to Kadingel. my luck looking because I also want to show off something else oh, yeah, right. unequip pair of stars for this so I can actually see what my luck is like right now I'm going to intentionally sleep until I get horrible luck let's go like I said there's a few things that I've neglected to show why I want to do this. Let's just say I had very little money. Maybe it didn't load all the way. Yeah, I must just not load it all the way. It's like I should have all the money. Anyway, um, how's my luck now? Worst, good, best. I can do better than that. Or worse than that. Let's fast forward through these a little bit because this might take a moment or two. Worst, normal, best. Normal good. His luck appears to be dropping by one each time I sleep. Bad, bad, best. Seriously. I just want all three to be at least be normal or negative. Normal, worst, good. <sighs> See, this is the problem with doing all of these let's analyzes is that this takes a long time to do, in my mind. Naturally, when I recorded this the last time, it happened on the very first try. Worst normal bet. Seriously? Just give me horrible luck on somebody other than Jack, preferably. Because Jack's, I can artificially lower his luck. Wonder. Let's make her luck drop. Good, normal, best. Trying to get bad luck. Best, good, good. Getting better, not worse. Mm. And I don't care if Jack has good luck. But best, best, good, really. Best. I wonder how the luck's actually determined. Normal, normal, best. Getting the closer. And good, best. First, best, good. Screw it, it's close enough. Let's go ahead and equip Doombringer, that way Jack's luck is terrible. And, let's go. Mm, flying machine. I don't want to accidentally get into a combat. So the first thing I wanted to show you all was what happens when you drink the potion wrong. walk in and out. I think I discovered that. Yeah, it's determined when I walk into the place. If 
not sure that my luck didn't increase for some reason. No. Once more, I don't know what the odds of this happening is, but I did actually get this to give me the bad effect on the previous recording. I want to show it off. Uh, there we go. That was the negative effect. See how it's a negative effect? That's definitely a negative effect. Now, let's equip Sheriff Stars on two of my characters. I'm intentionally not equipping one on Jack at the moment. I will, however, give Jack a whole bunch of magic carrots. Notice that I am, in fact, getting hit points as I walk, even though Sheriff Star is not supposed to do that. Uh, so Sheriff Star does a lot more than what it claims to do, as I found out. Uh, it's not only increases all stats, it's also HP and MP regeneration, but I think the MP regeneration only triggers after you're maxed out on hit points. So let's try this out, shall we? All right. I don't even know if the regeneration happens while I'm in the airship. Maybe it's only in combat? Anyway. Let's magic carrot up silly a little bit. I need a little bit of magic to teleport, which requires me to land. Sure, this is as good as a place as any to land. I said this is as good as a place as any to land. Ah, <sighs> silly. So, uh... Wait, why am I teleporting? I need to go to Kadingel. What am I doing? Is it me or the frame rate lower on the game right now? And I am just eyeballing it, but it looks lower. I went all the way around because I wasn't aligned properly. This should be better alignment. There we go. Alright, let's go back to Ka Dingel. Please, MP's not increasing. But I've definitely seen it increase before. Maybe it's only in combat? Anyway, she has 201 MP. Let's show you a couple of things. Zone! No! Ah, <sighs> cats. Can't live without them. Can't live without them. Sure, we'll go with that. So the first thing I want to do is that there's an attack that I have actually not really used in this game. Um, it's called Trump Card. So it converts your hit points to power for an enemy. So presumably, the more hit points that you have, the higher power it is. And for reference, I actually have all of these numbers as to how much damage things do, because I wrote things down last time with all of my testing of, um, that's 700 testing runs to figure out how these things work. But there's something interesting that happens with Trump Card. Yeah, okay. And I wanted to show it to you. Wait, why is Rudy faster? Oh, dang it. I forgot that Rudy's faster at the moment because of the Sheriff Stars. Whoops, well, I'm not going to be showing it to you on that enemy. Let's show it to you on this one. Mm, that might not actually be fairly well. Oh, well. Trump card. And defend. So, normally trump card's based off of, you know, your hit points. However, if you have one hit point, it does maximum damage no matter what. Now, admittedly, Jack's about to die because he has one hit point. But I just wanted to show what that looked like. Perk. Uh, I revive Jack. Yeah, so someone's not increasing in MP. I could have swore I saw that earlier. No, oh, doesn't matter. Jack's back. Being attacked by whatever that thing is. Oh yeah, we might as well equip our Sheriff Star at this point. Death dude. 
Oh, that's right. I'm trying to level up something. I forgot. So, next thing I wanted to show you. Let's go ahead and play the guitar again. This is a good one to try this on. So, I want to show you how Shadowbind ends up working. A really neat effect that I'd never seen before. So, Shadowbind will paralyze, and hopefully they'll actually stay paralyzed this time. I don't care. Can you just stay paralyzed for more than one round, please? All I want. Nope. Oh, right, my luck's lower. That's part of the reason why. Because status effects are based off of luck from what I've been able to figure out as to how long they last. And since Jack's luck's the worst right now because he's using the same weapon that uh, uh, Zed's using, so it automatically sets his luck to worst, they're never actually... That should help a little bit. Never mind. Time to pen. Are you going to stay paralyzed this time? Yes. Okay. Now it's time to show you one of the ones that I missed. So apparently, if you cast Shadowbind on a paralyzed enemy, specifically a paralyzed enemy, this happens. It's a darkness element attack. It's actually one of the strongest attacks in the game. Uh, where was that at? Do you even have the stats for that? I don't. That's right, because I couldn't figure them out. Because I did a bunch of testing on balloons. You know, the enemy way back at the berry cave, way back at the start of the game. The thing that has zero defense, so it's actually easy for me to be able to tell what things do. Yeah, um, balloons are immune to all status effects, so I can't tell you. Let's go ahead and try to get the other, uh, whatchamacallit, this one. Notice it targets everybody. And it's going to take a bit to actually unlock, unfortunately. with the guitar this is a lot quicker to do that's why i didn't bother pausing restless well good for you Evolution. Astronomy is what that actually is, stands for. Not exactly strong now, is it? Oh, normal attack. It looked like it was going to be. Right one. Ooh, you stole something from me. Big old mean head. There we go. So it's that, which did nothing, because it's an, instant, it's an instant death attack in a game that instant death attacks don't work very well in. So that's why I never bothered with it, nor did I remember that it existed, is because instant death attacks are terrible. Why would you use one? Especially when you have something as awesome as Magnum Fang. Let's finish off the combat. 
Okay. So, those were the two fast draws that I neglected to show before. Now, what I want to do is show you what the rest of the fast draws in the game do. And for that, I'm going to pause this so I can make sure my spreadsheet's set up. Yay, spreadsheets! Alright, and way down there... Yeah, this camera's very rubbish now that I'm not used to. So, way down there, you should see in the corner the stats for Trickster. Um, so, for reference, I'm going to actually use the attacks as we go, so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, just do that. So, Trickster is the first fast draw that you get. And... Or, sorry, not... Trickster's not the first fast draw that you get. Trickster is the one that you saw me use constantly to go steal something. It's this one. Trickster, coincidentally, is the weakest fast draw in the game. It does... Exactly, precisely, your strength, plus or minus 10% of your strength. So, whatever your strength stat is, which for Jack is 997 or something like that right now. Uh, I don't know, let's find out. Uh, do, do, do. 996. So, it will do 996... Plus or minus 10%, so roughly 900 to 1,090-ish damage, minus whatever defense they have. That's it. Trickster is the worst fast draw in the game for damage, and it's not meant to be for damage. After all, the whole point is to steal things. And as we found out, stealing things is useless in Wild Arms 1. Why would you bother doing this? Other than certain enemies, but yeah. So there's no reason to actually bother knocking down the MP cost to one like I did. I wouldn't bother going through this game again. But, well, I may not go through this game again. Next one that we have on the list is Sonic Buster. Sonic Buster is a group attack, so, and it says it's a Sonic flash at slash attack. And Sonic is wind element, right? So it turns out, no. Sonic Buster actually doesn't have an element. So, this is what Sonic Buster looks like. For those that may not remember, because I barely used it in the game, and it's been such a long time, so it's that attack. Um, Sonic Buster does... So, you can see how much damage I was doing in my little test. Um, definitely does more than Trickster. In fact, it does one and a half, plus or minus a quarter, time strength. Uh, just notice that Excel has this cut off at the moment. So, it's slightly better than Trickster, but not by much. And keep in mind, the next up from here is your basic attack. Turns out your basic attack for any of these characters is 2 times strength plus or minus 25%. And the plus or minus percentages are a little off. I'm only mostly sure of where they're at. I think what it actually is is everything is a multiplier off of your attack, which makes it hard to figure out. Especially given that there's one that's off, but I'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, um, this means that Sonic Buster does less damage than your own normal attack, but it does it to a group. So if you, say, have two enemies in a group, and you end up using Sonic Buster, let's see if we can get that really fast. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking instead. Um, so if you have two enemies in a group, you have two or more enemies? You do not, actually. Um, so if you have two or more enemies in a group, Sonic Buster would actually do effectively 3x damage. You're spending 7 MP. I should actually scroll down here so you can see. You're spending 7 MP to do not that much damage. And in fact, the next one up, uh, the next damage up is Psycho Crack, which I'm going to show you right now. So, Psycho Crack is actually two and a half times, uh, two and a half plus or minus 25% time strength. So, Psycho Crack doing two and a half X damage means that two uses of Psycho Crack does five X damage, whereas one use of Sonic Buster does one and a half, you have two tar if you have up to three targets, it's four and a half times damage. Long story short, I'm babbling a bunch. Anyway, um, 
it's not worth using Sonic Buster. The only time that it's worth using Sonic Buster, which is coincidentally exactly when I used it in the game, was when you wanted to kill the enemies fast and they didn't have very many hit points. Also, each of Jack's fast draws that just do damage will always do damage. They always hit. So that's another reason to potentially use something like Sonic Buster is like, say, the Harpies way back in the start of the game or Sirens, which are the pellet swapped Harpies, where they will steal something, then run away. So you want to make sure you kill them fast so they don't run away with your loot. Uh, yeah, using Sonic Buster might not be a bad idea. They don't have that many hit points. They are also really hard to hit. Otherwise, it's a terrible move. And Psycho Crack's not that great either. You're spending 4 MP for the ability to do what's basically 25% more damage. Uh, if the Confusion Effect goes off, then it's not too bad. But the every boss in the game is immune to Confusion. It doesn't really help. Anyway, next spell on the list is Guilty Blade. So Guilty Blade's described as a shock sword attack for a group. And once more, it turns out that there's no element associated with Guilty Blade. Guilty Blade looks like this, for those that may not remember, because we've basically not used it. It does that. And it does do more damage. In fact, it does 3.5x damage. So, but notice how much more MP it costs. Um, Guilty Blade is not that bad of an attack. It's probably still not worth you spending all of your... Um, why am I blanking tonight? And part of it's that it's kind of late at night for me, but whatever. Um, use all of your secret signs. There we go. Uh, it's not worth using your secret signs on something like that because... Eh, you've got better ones. And you, not only do you have better ones, you have cheaper ones. Let me show you the next one and you'll see what I mean. So this one's another one that we barely used. It's called Blast Charge. Hopefully there's more than one enemy. There is. There's Evil Deads. Oh, it's Evil Balloons. Perfect. So we have Blast Charge. Blast Charge is an intro. It's the only attack in the game like this. It hits a single target, but also deals damage to the other enemies in the here, let me show you. So, you see it's a single target? Oh, uh, I forgot to show the description of Blast Charge. A localized blast for an area. But it doesn't say group or all or single, it's area. And the reason for that is that Blast Charge looks kind of like this. So, the first target takes a lot of damage and the subsequent targets take very little. So the first target takes the same amount of damage as Guilty Blade, on average. Um, you can tell from my average minimum and maximum that things aren't quite accurate. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's my best guess is that it's three and a half times strength, plus or minus 50% of strength. The others take one eighth of whatever the target would take. So it's the same type of roll, um, but the amount of damage dealt doesn't appear to be based off of the defense of what you're hitting. It's based off the def or it's not based off the defense of the other creatures, it's based off the defense of what you're hitting. It's a really weird spell, and I don't quite understand how that one works. Yeah, really leveled up. That's nice for him. Let's go ahead and show off the next one. It's one of my favorite abilities, and it's the one that I usually work on dropping the cost of. It's Meteor Dive. We saw us use Meteor Dive quite a bit earlier on before we got Bang and Bang. Just as a reminder, this is what Meteor Dive looks like. And it does a fairly large amount of damage. Actually, it does 4x damage. So it's once more 4 times half strength, basically. So it's really good, especially since it only costs 6 MP. Keep in mind, compare Meteor Dive with its 4x strength modifier and 6 MP versus Psycho Crack, which is 2.5x modifier and 4 MP. This costs 2 more MP and does substantially more damage. This is probably what I would focus on reducing the cost of first. Because 6 MP down to 1 is really nice and doesn't take that many fast draws. Or, Secret Science. Uh, next one. 
next up, well, yeah, we have Cosmic Nova. Cosmic Nova is a very nice spell, or very nice fast draw technique. It's the one that I reduced, if you notice. Uh, it's really expensive normally. This normally costs 20 for reference. And I know you've seen this recently if you caught up on the videos, but it looks like this. And it does a lot of damage. In fact, it does the same amount of damage as Meteor Diving. So a Cosmic Nova is the equivalent of Meteor Diving every enemy in the battlefield. Meteor Dive costing 4 MP means that you would have to have a little more than three enemies for that to be useful, like perfectly efficient. But that's actually better efficiency than Sonic Buster versus, say, Psycho Crack, where you, if you have two enemies, you're better off Psycho Cracking. Um, Cosmic Nova is the best area of effect spell or area of effect ability that Jack has. It's better than Blast Charge because it actually does significant damage to other targets. It's kind of on par with Guilty Blade, except Guilty Blade, yeah, you'll notice that Cosmic Nova only does a little bit more damage than Guilty Blade. It also only costs 4 MP more, but Guilty Blade's a group ability. Cosmic Nova hits everything. I know you get Cosmic Nova relatively late in the game, and that's part of the reason why that doesn't make much sense, but, you know, it's still a really nice ability. The next one is the one that you've definitely seen the most of, and there's a good reason for it, it's Magnum Fang. Magnum Fang usually costs 5 MP, or sorry, 14 MP, not 5, definitely not 5. Um, if you've forgotten from like 10 minutes ago, this is what it looks like. And it does a large amount of damage, specifically, it does 5x damage. So you'll notice that the multipliers for strength are going up, like, this is 10%, these are 25%, these are 50%. Um, and it caps out at 50% for reference. So that's the reason why I think it might be multiplier based off of your attack rather than just a flat out, hey look, do five times your strength modifier and damage plus or minus 50% of your strength modifier. Um, this does cost quite a bit more than really any of the other single target attacks. I mean, you've got Meteor Dive that only costs six. This is doing your strength modifier more in damage and costing over double the amount. But here's the thing. Unlike the area of effect abilities, which you would probably use in a normal combat, the single target abilities are probably primarily used during boss battles. And for boss battles, you just want to do the most amount of damage as fast as possible and dump all of your MP. So Magnum Fang is actually a really good choice for boss battles. Not to mention, yeah, 14 MP is pretty high, but if you save up all of your fast signs, fast signs, secret sign, fast draw, and merge the two together, if you use up all of your secret signs, it's not that hard to drop this down to a reasonable price. Here's an interesting one. And I'm going to have to show this one multiple times. Uh, it's Phaser Zap. I only learned about it in this run exactly how it works. So I'm going to show you one Phaser Zap. It looks like that. It doesn't look like there's much of anything. It does the same amount of damage as... Uh, whatchamacallit. You stole my heat solve. Uh, it does the same amount of damage as a... Um, bang and bang. And it costs two more. That's not too bad, but there's a secret to it. Namely, that if you equip an elemental ring and then do a phaser zap, I think these are weak against Saint. We'll find out really fast. Or not. I mean, they are weak against Saint, but, you know, I killed it before I got an attack. Ah. <sighs> I want to actually show the attack. So if your blade has a weapon on it, Fafnir? Supposed to be Fafnir? Pretty sure that's supposed to be Fafnir. Anyway, um, if your blade has an attack, which I don't know the weakness of this enemy, but I'm just gonna use Holy just because, you have a different visual effect. 
Hey, Melinda, this is what it looks like for Holy. There's white sparkles. Little white thing going around. And it does Holy damage. This is the only... Um... Whatchamacallit? Uh, this is the only fast draw in the game that actually uses the element from your own weapon. Which is a really interesting concept. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest, because it's just a thing. Um, for certain enemies, Phaser Zap would be way better than Magnum Fang. And for other enemies, it's kind of meh. But the main thing is that if you equip the wrong element and you use Magnum Fa or and you use Phaser Zap, you're not healing the enemy, and that's not good. So, finally, we have the spell that, or the one that I wanted to show you earlier, which I did. Um, I don't know why I'm talking like that. Uh, Trump Card, which is totally based off of your maximum hit points. So currently, Jack has a reduced maximum hit points. And the way Trump Card actually appears to work, it's that it's your HP percentage. So, if you're fully healed, you're 100% hit points. HP percentage divided by 10. So if you're fully healed, that's 10x strength plus or minus one. Uh, actually, hold on. It could be like this. This formula is actually slightly off. It's actually like that. And the reason why I phrase it that way is that this is the only one that applies for minus strength modifier because it's literally double the strength of Phaser Zap and Magnum Fang. Um, if you're at full hit points, this is a 10x strength modifier. If you're at half hit points, this is a 5x strength modifier. What I'm trying to say is, for a boss battle, as long as you're over 50% hit points, trump card's actually your best bet. Um, assuming that you're not low on MP, because this is a really high MP cost for Jack. If you've reduced it through the use of secret signs, or if you have even higher hit points, trump card looks like a great option. Um, if I were to use Trump Card on a Balloon at full hit points, I would be doing roughly 9999 damage, which is the same as Trump Card at one hit point. Yeah, there's Trump Card at one hit point. It just does 9999 no matter what you're hitting. Um, which, by the way, is not mentioned anywhere in the game as far as I can tell. So there are a couple of other secret signs. Keep doing that. Fast draws. Um, so we've got Heal Blade. We've already discussed this in a previous Let's Analyze, but it heals 50% of the target's maximum hit points and recovers all status effects other than KO. Heal Blade's awesome. Definitely drop that cost to one. There's no reason not to. Uh, we have the Instant Death spells, which are both Void and Soul Breaker. They're exactly the same. Only one single target and one's AoE. Void actually costs less than Trump Card. Makes sense, because Void is almost completely worthless. Um, so many things are immune to instant death, and it's a low percent chance of hitting. It's not worth it, in my mind. Now uh, we have Divide Shot. Divide Shot will do 50% of the enemy's maximum hit points. Bosses are immune to Divide Shot, and it will max out at 9999. The only place in the game that Divide Shot's really useful, or only places, I should say, is one, the arena, because those aren't technically bosses a lot of the time. And two, the really weird alien creatures that drop duplicators. Divide Shot is really useful against them because they're not immune to it. Slash Rave. So Slash Rave is each slash of a Slash Rave. I'll actually show it to you. So Slash Rave, the reason why I don't have it in my spreadsheet is really simple. Let me just make my spreadsheet go away again. There we go. Uh, it's really simple because it doesn't do anything other than basic attacks. So what you do for Slash Rave is that you look, initial one, that's one slash. It dealt exactly how much damage a single attack would do, which is 2x strength modifier. If you have two slashes, it does 4x strength modifier. If you have three slashes, it does 6x strength modifier. I know this is a huge shock to everyone that it's completely and totally linear. Here's the problem with Slash Rave. Slash Rave costs 12 MP. So in order for it to be as good as Meteor Dive, which costs half as much, you have to hit twice. As a little reminder, Jack's luck is best I hit once. So as far as I can tell, Slash Rave averages hitting 
about three times, which should be 6x damage, which would be a lot of damage, but that's an average. And also, it's individual attacks. This is the part that I didn't really mention. Um, what that means is that the enemy's defense counts for each flash. So if you're fighting something like a Baphomet that doesn't really have any defense, that's fine. It's going to do um, 2n times strength damage. That's fine. If you're fighting, say, a boss, on the other hand, that has a lot of physical defense, it's practically worthless. Uh, you might as well just do normal attacks. That's more efficient. And again, you saw I had one hit on that, and I actually have best luck right now. It's really hard to reliably get it higher. Um, wait, what else do I have? Do, 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 do. I've already covered Trump Card. I just showed you Shadow Bind, where the first attack paralyzes a group, and if they're still paralyzed on your turn, you do a really high damage attack. How high? I have no idea. Let me just base with the other one, actually. Let's Shadow Bind that one. Phase with that one out of existence, and here, Jack, have a magic carrot. No, actually, even better, mystic magic carrot. We'll let Rudy have some MP. Oh, you can actually stay paralyzed. No, of course not. That would be too easy. Stay paralyzed. What the heck? This is why I probably hey, I would have never noticed anyway, because I don't bother with status effect attacks in Wild Arms because they don't work very well. Okay, you're actually there. Good. Now, unfortunately, I can't really do my estimate on damage because my force levels maxed out, and all of my numbers are based off of having zero force levels, which is exactly what you would expect for not having something that's constantly increasing force. There's no real way for me to fully know how much damage this does, but I can at least do a quick estimate, like this. So at full force level, Dark Sweep appears to do a lot of damage. It's 10x modifier or higher, and my guess is that it's actually 10x multiplier, but I don't really have a way of confirming that. And I, to be fair, I've not found any of these attacks in code yet. It's kind of a mystery to me. Let's see, did I miss any other ones? Nope, well, that's it. So that's everything when it comes to Jack's fast draw. Um, I'm going to eventually compile a lot of what I've figured out in an FAQ of some variety. I don't know when I'm going to write that or anything. I'm just going to put in my OneNote for the time being. Maybe that one note will actually become something useful. I don't know. But what I do know is that this isn't quite done yet. I still need to go through... Oops. I have one note active, which means that it gets funky with the controller. There we go. Uh, I still need to go through Rudy's attacks. Exactly what the ATP is for this, because it's hard for me to figure that out. Uh, and also finish up the rest of Cecilia's spells, because we do have more spells that I haven't actually done a Let's Analyze on. But those will be later dates. Um, that's it for now. Zone Kitty decided to not join me, even though he wouldn't get off of me right before this recording. But I've been Aetherspoon. Hope you've enjoyed this. I doubt too many people care, but that's okay. And I'll talk to you next time, Internet. Bye!